Hello, and welcome to a live recording of Guide to the Unknown. I'm Will. And I'm his big sister, Kristen. Hello. Oh, what's going on? Hello, JD, Kit Kat, Drew. Welcome Hi. back. We haven't done a, a true official live stream in a little bit. Mm-hmm. What do you think? Hey, Andrew. Was it yeah. one week off or two weeks two. off? Two. I was right. sick and then you were sick. Oh, that's right. What could you do? Yeah, right. There was nothing could be Woo. done. That was quite something. Yeah. Hi, Andrea. Yeah, what's going on, everybody? It's nice to be back with all of you. Yeah. We hope that you have been well. Yes, absolutely. Um, uh, 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 yeah. Good day to you all. I hope everybody's having... <coughs> Excuse yeah. me. Yes. Having a wonderful October, watching some fun horror movies, or doing fun Halloweeny activities. Yeah, and I hope that. <coughs> okay. All right. I hope you're having a nice night. I curse you. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, if only you would curse me with thinner. That would be great. <laughs> I curse you thinner. That would be great. That's like a diet plan. You yeah, get being, the thinner curse. Being then, cursed thinner. All you have to do is is then transfer it to a piece of pie. But to say, plate. as long as you get a piece of pie on your plate, who cares? Then you're fine. It's all good. <laughs> Who's been to a pumpkin patch? Not me. Ah oh, man, we were supposed to go, and then we were sick. Uh, Wanted to take baby Zoe to a pumpkin patch. Oh, that'd be really cute. Yeah. You put her next to a pumpkin, and they're like around the same size as each other. Yeah. Um. Uh. Yeah, a pumpkin that she could almost fit in. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Uh, a pumpkin built for two. Kit Kat says, uh, I had to not laugh while an old lady said shart instead of shirt. <laughs> that was my day. That's a great day. That's a say. So an A plus day. Do you have this shart in my size? <laughs> That's awesome. Sorry, it only comes in bigger and bigger and bigger. <laughs> <laughs> hey, John. Welcome. Hello. Hi. Um, yeah. Happy Scream Day to everybody. The trailer mm-hmm. for the new Scream movie came out. That was very exciting. Yep. Um so we had a little siesta um, in Screamland, but we're back mm-hmm. with uh, Cage Tober. So that's right. You know, we're back here. <laughs> you gotta do what you gotta do. All right. Yeah, totally. All right, let's what hit you, it. Yeah, you think we should just start it? Yeah, let's rip all right, it, everybody. We're gonna we're gonna launch right in. We're starting the show. Mm-hmm. Here we go. Molly's excited. Yeah, so am I. Hello. Are you going to listen to a podcast? Do you like? Scary podcasts. What's your favorite scary podcast? Well, it better be Guide to the Unknown. Hello, welcome to Guide to the Unknown. I'm Kristen. And I'm her little brother, William. And this week we are continuing our Cagetober journey with Willie's Wonderland. What a journey it's yeah. been. Yeah. Yep, I feel we <laughs> may have um it may have been an overcommitment to do a whole month of Nicolas Cage movies. Yeah, and also it turns out that this month has 5 Fridays in it. So Will and I thought that we were halfway through, but we're not. We're I guess not. now we kind of are. Yeah, with this um, with this yeah. episode, we will officially be beyond halfway. Yeah, we hadn't picked enough movies cuz we thought it was a standard, you know, 4 Friday a month deal, but yeah. not this one. Not for Cage Tober. So we're actually adding on another Nicolas Cage movie for the end of the month. But for picking up, uh, if you're on our Patreon, you've seen the movies that we committed to already. Mm-hmm. The one that we've added, I actually am kind of interested in seeing. I so I'm, I'm thankful for that. Yes. Uh, Small blessings. But yeah, Cage Tober is turning out to be Slash Tober was infinitely better. <laughs> we Yo. Agree? absolutely okay we are absolutely in agreement for for october 2022 yeah we'll think about this a little bit we've got to think a little harder a little bit more in realistic terms because this sounds like a good idea yeah until you're watching then weird indie nick cage movies where he fights an ostrich right so i think we just have to put ourselves in our future shoes and be like what's the process of doing this gonna be like yeah so anyway the process (laughs) was like watching nicholas cage fight a bunch of animatronics yes while completely mute yes so willie's... i didn't know that no i didn't know it either i was disappointed by it willie's if wonderland I'm gonna see him i may as well really get in there and get some voice uh, this this movie almost felt to me there's one scene in particular that made me think of like when you purchase a cameo from somebody mm-hmm. so they give you like the best they got like yeah. ernie hudson dresses up like a ghostbuster right you know and uh um uh, R L J 
Jackson yes. um, did the ghost face mm-hmm. uh, voice for us. So like people will give you what you're looking for if you yeah. buy a cameo. There's one scene in this movie where Nick Cage really gets weird. Oh, Nick Cage is it up? And I was like, dancing. This is yeah, the dancing scene. I was like, this is the one moment. This yeah. is this is the one time that they were able to get him to do something befitting of the 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 Nicolas Cage mantle. The yeah, exactly the expected bizarre stuff. Right. But because Otherwise, of that, it was just like it was, action, dude. Yeah, because it was only one scene of that. It actually felt very out of place in a in a in a different sort of way for what he usually does it certainly did and will i think it will not surprise you to hear that he improvised that i am i've never been surprised by something less than the (laughs) fact that nicholas cage improvised a dancing scene in the middle of willie's wonderland right so we're gonna get there real quick i just want to make sure that people know i just mentioned roger l jackson the voice of ghostface uh so it's worth mentioning that uh, uh as we're recording this kristen and i just saw the trailer for the new scream movie and we could not help ourselves. We immediately recorded our uh, sort of thoughts. Yeah, our you first could... impressions and theories about what might be coming at us in Scream 5-ish. But it's just called Scream yep. 2022. And we put that online instantly, like right after the trailer dropped, basically. So if you have not watched or listened to our theories, go check that out. Yeah. Um, it's a, a very fun. And I dusted off my old Scream script, and uh, it was fun putting that out there again. Yeah. So uh, go check that out. So you can hear us, and you can read that thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, all right, Willie's Willie's Wonderland. Yes. Which, this is not what? my Wonderland. It's not. This body of work is not a Wonderland. No. As so, far as I'm concerned. Just some quick facts about it. I'm going to assume that most people don't know what this is. We will be, of course, spoiling it. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is a movie that came out in February of this year. Yeah. Came out earlier this year, mm-hmm. um, although it clearly was meant to come out in 2020. Right. Uh, one of the taglines is, 2020 isn't over yet. <laughs> right. Well, it was by I, the time this came out. I guess they just decided to capitalize on the 2020 of it all. The fact that everybody was like, get yeah. me out of 2020, having no idea that 2021 would be much the same. Yes. Um, uh, other taglines are, let playtime begin, and the fun begins this winter. Uh, This movie was written by G.O. Parsons, directed by Kevin Lewis, and here's the synopsis from IMDb. A quiet drifter is tricked into a janitorial job at the now-condemned Willie's Wonderland, which is basically a Chuck E. Cheese type pizza party, kid's birthday party, animatronic band Mm -hmm. place. The mundane tasks suddenly become an all-out fight for survival against wave after wave of demonic animatronics. Fists fly, kicks land, Titans clash, and only one side will make it out alive. Right. All right. What do you think of this movie? Um, I. Uh, so, the 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 elephant in the room is that this obviously is is Five Nights at Freddy's, right? Right. Yes. Which, which we talked about previously on the show. The like mm-hmm. indie darling game that is wonderful. Yeah. Um, it, it's super fun and inventive and is about a pizza place where kids have birthday parties and there are animatronics roaming around and they are haunted and they'll kill you. Right. So now here's this movie. And I read on Wikipedia that Geo Parsons um, Absolutely denied any comparison yep. between this and Five Nights at Freddy's. Mm-hmm. But this movie, the, it was announced or conceptualized, or the original short film he made, I guess, is 2016. Mm-hmm. And Five Nights at Freddy's had been around for two years at that point. Right. 2014 is Five Nights at Freddy's. Okay. And famously, the Five Nights at Freddy's franchise, they made, um, it's one guy, it's Scott Cawthon to start. He made the first game, and then mere months later, Came out with Five Nights at Freddy's 2. Right. A few months later, three. So these things... There were plenty of games. Plenty of games already insanely popular. Oh, yeah. Those things were like instantly popular. Huge. And there were like uh, novelizations. Mm -hmm. It's like this whole huge ecosystem. It's a gigantic... Honestly, since the last time that we looked at it, so much more has been added. I'm sure. It might be fun to do a a revisit. Sure. Or try to play some of the newer stuff. Yeah. But um, so... uh, you know, maybe it's a, a legal thing that they're not going to say like, yeah, 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 our movie's just like Five Nights at Freddy's. There but must clearly be. this or, is born or out pride? of pride. 
I don't know. Or, uh, pride is an interesting one. You know? That's a very good point. It could be pride. Mm-hmm. Um, but so, uh, yeah, I, I, it's hard to watch this movie and not think about all that stuff. Yeah. And especially given what I do know about Five Nights at Freddy's, which I think is great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's um, cool. It's like super fun. Even the, the demonic animatronic concept here, I actually, I, I think is yeah. not as well done. Mm-hmm. I totally agree. It, it feels like a knock off, a knock off like five nights at Freddy's. Like yeah. it, it doesn't, it's not as high quality. No, it is the Kirkland toilet paper to five nights at Freddy's quilted Northern. <laughs> right. So <laughs> although they're not both toilet paper, right? If Five Nights at Freddy's is, if this is Kirkland toilet paper, mm-hmm. I think that Five Nights at Freddy's is like um, uh, uh, a, a bidet, a bounty, uh, sturdy paper towel. Okay. Right? They don't do the same job. You could, No, they do not do the same job. But the it, ingredients are the same. The ingredients so are the I same. Think They're you're both right. on paper stock. Yeah. So it's like, you know, Five Nights at Freddy's caters to a very specific audience of people who play games. Mm-hmm. If you don't play video games, you probably don't have much awareness of Five Nights at Freddy's. Definitely. So this might be incredibly fresh yes. to non-gamers. Yes. But um, That's true. But for people who do play games, people who play games also watch movies, mm-hmm. right? It's not like there's only a subset of people who watch movies. Yeah. So for anybody who plays games or is familiar with Five Nights at Freddy's, this comes out and you just go, what? Right. Why'd they turn these paper towels into toilet paper? Mm-hmm. It's, it's weird. Yeah. So it was our metaphor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but so from that, I almost I would almost be curious to see. And I tried to look. I've got a few reviews that I'll read to you mm-hmm. later. I wanted to find honest, earnest reviews from somebody who saw this movie and doesn't know what Five Nights at Freddy's is uh-huh. and is not here for the meme of right. Nicolas Cage. Right, they're, they're just watching a movie. They're just watching a movie. I'm curious to find out that, but I couldn't really find one of those. I I'll, think the Nicolas Cage of it all is so ubiquitous at this point that that's like impossible to find. All, like Almost all the five-star reviews are like, Cage is crushing it again. Yeah, right. Rage Cage punching a frog? Yeah. What? <laughs> and it's like, all right, is that really your five-star review? Is that really what you think? Or mm-hmm. is that just fun to say? Maybe both. Maybe both. Um, so what do I think of this movie? I wouldn't recommend it. No, I wouldn't either. It was kind of a... It wasn't the worst. Look, compared to last week, what a breath of fresh... But I didn't enjoy it really. Uh, you think that this this is this better? is better than Vampire's Kiss? Yes, I do think of that. Yeah, this is easier to watch than Vampire's Kiss. I didn't feel sick. Did I feel a little bored? Did I sometimes go ugh? Yeah, but I wasn't like oh god, oh I'm dying. See, I the unpleasantness of Vampire's Kiss is and so I, deep and visceral. I under I understand that entirely. I don't take issue with anything you just said but i think that this does highlight a difference in us as like movie watchers Mm -hmm. i would rather a movie make me uncomfortable and make me feel bad yeah than a movie make me feel bored if i'm bored then it may as well not even be on i I don't even know why i'm watching it that to me for a movie to be boring is like that i I, you know i think I think in my own life, mm-hmm. I enjoy being bored a lot lately. Mm-hmm. I've got, you know, I've got an eight month old baby. I don't have a lot of time to to sit and be bored. Yeah. Um, but I find that's where like a lot of inspiration comes from is just yeah. like sitting and, and staring at something and thinking. You have to make room. A drive or something like that. But boredom is not something I even artistically would want to evoke in someone. No, nobody never, wants to evoke that. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I would rather a movie make me feel sad and gross than a movie bore me. No. No. On the scale for me, sad and gross is lowest. Boredom's a little higher. Obviously, everything good and up is up. So no one's ever going to put, you know, uh, uh, the challenge to you of, all right, you have to watch one of these two movies. One will make you feel bad, then one's going to be really boring. I'll take boring. Wow. I can zone out. That's fine. Yeah. Oh man. Happy to happy to float. Just disappear into yes. <laughs> your mind palace. Yes. <laughs> yeah, but I don't want to be like, oh god. Yeah. I'm gonna be thinking about this. This is awful. I feel terrible. No. I certainly yeah, I certainly can't 
fault you for that. Mm-hmm. But uh, so this this movie, mm-hmm. and again, I feel like we've watched something that I don't. It's really not a movie. I don't. I usually don't <laughs> understand it really when you say that. <laughs> yeah. What do you mean? I, I guess this. Yeah. Well, Nicholas. So Vampire's Kiss. When I was saying that, it's because like there was a lot of stuff in it that was like stunt work. Uh huh. You know? Yeah. And it's just like uh, um, those like telephoto shots where he's you know, moaning on the streets and real people <laughs> yeah. are reacting and stuff. And, and everything in that movie is because Nicolas Cage was like, I wanted to challenge myself to say boo-hoo. Yeah, th- I mean it's like, that... oh, but we're just watching your... Yes. You have fun. That's not a movie to me. I get that. Okay. Yeah, it, that, yeah, it's just like, what is this? So this, mm-hmm. Nicolas Cage was attracted to this because he thought it would be fun to do a movie where he didn't have any lines. Yeah, but I mean, so he's still getting to do a Nicolas Cage thing, but there's at least a plot. To the, it, it feels like a movie. It's to the detriment of the movie that he did that. <laughs> right? Oh, absolutely. He needed to talk. <laughs> he absolutely needed to talk. I needed to know what he was thinking. Yeah, completely. We don't know understand. his name. He's just known as the janitor. But it's like not cool enough for that sort of gimmick Mm-mm. of the blank no. You know, like the cowboy the or fixer, whatever. The, yeah. Yeah. No. Um, so I absolutely needed him to talk and find out what his deal was. I did not understand. No. What he was doing. I didn't either. He drove. So he was. He was identified initially by the fact that he drives a badass car. I know. I was thinking. I guess Nicolas Cage really loves cars because yes. we they yeah. keep coming up. Like there's a Patreon episode out right now, actually. As we speak, where we are when looking. When this episode at, drops. Yes, yeah. when, it, when it drops. Um, where we're watching Nicolas Cage clips. And a few of them involve cars. He was in Gone in 60 Seconds, which I forgot about. Me too. Then there's like this weird movie where it's like a cameo of his where he drives up in a car. I forgot He's in about a cool that. car in this. Yeah. He must, he must love a vehicle. I like a car. L- look, I'm a guy who likes a car. Look at me. <laughs> <laughs> and then I later like he cars. likes a bike. Uh a Wicker ghost Man. riding bike. Oh, a oh, motorcycle. That's right. Yeah, I thought yeah, you were talking yeah. about a bicycle that he rides well, in Wicker Man. He does. Oh, he really likes that bike. So that's why he pulls that gun on Sister Rose yeah, for touching it. It costs somebody to mm-hmm. get a bike. So um I, I think that so he's identified by his cool car and his sunglasses and his leather jacket. But when so his his car breaks down and we will find out that this town traps people. This is actually something that I conceptually like and wish that it was yeah. like, developed more. So they uh, they trap people who mm-hmm. are driving through town. They will. They put out like a spike strippy kind yep. of thing, and it'll it'll you know force them to pull over. And then they go, well, the only place I got for you to stay is uh, it'll be free. It's not gonna be comfortable, <laughs> but it'll put a roof over your head. It's Willie's Wonderland. Yeah. So you're gonna sleep there tonight. And right. It turns out that the the townsfolk are doing this. To offer these people as a sacrifice yes. to the animatronic band. And they'll strike a deal. They say, if you, you know, you're staying here anyway, if you clean this place tonight, then I'll pay for your car. Right. Like, we'll call that your payment for cleaning, and then you'll be able to just, like, get out of town, no problem. Exactly. So, Nicolas Cage, when his car breaks down and, you know, a helpful, quote-unquote, trucker pulls up who's really in on the scheme, mm-hmm. he goes, what's your name, pal? And Nicolas Cage does, you know... Uh, almost like a, a Clint Eastwoodish <laughs> turn and look. Yeah, and doesn't say a word. Nah, you'd think that that silence. Not would... sure if he trusts this feller. I know. I'm I'm a bit puzzled by something here. It's nitpick. Okay. It's an, it's absolutely a nitpick. You would think because now we're really about to be introduced to the fact that he doesn't speak. Mm-hmm. You might assume that when somebody asks your name, you say, "Hi, I'm Chucky." Yeah. Want to play? Right. <laughs> but Nicolas Cage doesn't say anything, so that silence should drag on. Uh For a long time until the guy's like, not going to tell me, huh? Strong silent type, eh? Yeah. But Nicolas Cage, he goes, what's your name, partner? And he turns and looks. And within a millisecond, the guy's like, strong silent type, huh? (laughs) He could have been interrupting him almost. It was too fast. And then it was bizarre to me because the rest of the movie, scenes drag on. Yeah. There are silences. There's like dead air in this movie. Yeah, totally. You would think that they would love an appropriate long silence. But no, they truncated that and left other ones. Yeah. It's weird. Absolutely. That's a great point. So anyway, Nicholas... Um, wait, also, the guy who... Well, I, I think he owns a Willy's Wonderland. I'm not sure. But the guy who offers to pay for his car... Yeah, Tex Muchacho or something. That's what I was saying. His name is Tex McAdoo. McAdoo. 
That's a great name. It's maybe my favorite part of the movie. I, I was about to say the exact same thing. It might be my yeah. favorite part of the movie that his name is Tex McAdoo. Yeah, that's a good name. <laughs> that's a great name. <laughs> um, but so they, you know, they they make the deal with Nicolas Cage, who's very much. And this is the other thing about him being silent. He, when they're when they're talking about the car, he pulls out cash to pay the guy. He's like, uh, or no, pulls out a card. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he goes, sorry, we only t- we don't uh, take cars. We only take cash. Then Nicolas Cage looks over, and there's an ATM with an out of order sign. Right. So silently he's communicated, "I'd like to use this ATM, but it won't work." Mm-hmm. So the guy affirms, "Sorry, that's out too, but I'll tell you what, I'll make you a deal." And now we're into the scheme. Yeah. So Nicolas Cage's inability to speak, they're finding clever ways to convey what he means mm-hmm. through showing right. on screen. He looks at an ATM and it says out of order. Therefore. We know what he wanted to do. Yeah. We understand what he's communicating without saying it. He's a real Charlie Chaplin. But as the movie goes on, that is no longer the case. Mm -hmm. And he just doesn't react to people at all. He doesn't say anything. He doesn't give a hint of his motivation. He'll sometimes just look at somebody and then leave the room. Yeah. And you don't know why or where he's going. So I don't I, know. he's all hopped up on caffeine. Yeah. On so, that punch drink. He keeps drinking this uh like Red Bull ish sort of thing. He has his watch set to set off an alarm every so often, mm-hmm. which tells him he has to stop whatever he's doing, no matter how important. Right. And go drink soda. Yes. What I don't know. I don't know. Is that if he were a robot, uh huh, that would almost be like That's I need to go oil. change my batteries. Right. Right? I have to drink this energy drink. Yeah. Otherwise I literally don't have energy. Right. I know. I don't know. But there's a moment and I, I just thought that it was like a weird mm-hmm. quirk. I don't know. Like uh like Brad Pitt's always eating in Ocean's Eleven. Yes. I I mean, I think it's not that. Do you find something else? Well, because I don't I don't have any insight into it, but there was a moment where one of the animatronics is about to attack him and our like final girl, Liv. Mm-hmm. They're about to kickstart a, a, a fight to the death. Right. But Nicolas Cage's watch goes off, so he turns around and leaves. And neither Liv nor the monster uh-huh. understand what he's doing. So he goes to drink a soda, and then I was thinking, like, okay, so he's literally going to recharge to come back to kick some... Some, some chameleon serious tale. I'm gonna kick some animatronic booty. <laughs> I wish that line was in there. I wish. He, I wish. If he was gonna talk, mm-hmm. that would be the line. That would be the line. Did you read what they said was gonna be his one line? No. Oh my god, they didn't do it. Thank God, obviously. But they were gonna have him say one line before he goes into his fight with Willie, and it was "Come at me, bro." And then they decided that that wasn't, like, weighty enough to be the line. And so they scrapped it, much at at Nicolas Cage's behest. And I think they made absolutely the right move. I have nothing but unkind things to say Come at me, bro. There's nothing nice I can say about that. No. I I understand. And also, the influence of Jersey Shore. Because that's directly from Jersey Shore, pretty much. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Nobody said come at me, bro, before that show? Not a lot. It definitely entered the zeitgeist with Jersey Shore. Really? I think about that connected to Zach Bagans. Come at me, bro? Yeah. I think about mm-hmm. him saying that to a ghost. He definitely <laughs> says that to I don't know. I don't know if he actually has done that or if that's just like a meme thing. Yeah. For all I know, he has. Yeah, okay. I don't know. But so, Nicolas Cage, when he walks away from that fight and he goes to drink a soda, I thought he was going to come right back with yeah. his batteries recharged. But then he goes and plays pinball. I know. So he drinks the soda, then plays pinball, then comes back with no sort of cue as to why. And I know I'm asking too much for the movie that this is. Mm -hmm. But what I'm asking is for things that a movie would do. Right. To say to you, here's why he's doing that. Or at least leave the space for you to to figure it out on your own or theorize. Mm -hmm. I have zero ability to theorize. I can theorize around him drinking soda. You've already heard me do it. I cannot theorize <laughs> him going to drink the soda, stopping to play pinball for a while I before know. coming back and, and still just joining the fight. I thought I missed something no. at first. I was like, wait, what? What's going on? No. I, is it all just that this is a very quirky guy? We're, we've get, we're given no other information. Here, so I can only assume that this is just a man who has his picadillos. I have horrible news. Okay. Um, 
It's not really news. It's an opinion. Okay. <laughs> With the new information you've supplied to me that they wanted him to say, come at me, bro. <laughs> I've, I have suddenly, I understand entirely what this movie is. It's I not going to be news yeah. to you. I know you already know it. You, we all feel it. Yeah, we feel it. I'm just going to lend voice to it. <laughs> speak for us. I'm, I'm just going to speak for everybody here. Yeah. If you've seen Willy's Wonderland and you like it, I'm so happy for you. This is a uh, an embarrassing um, attempt at making a movie that is so LOL. Um, yeah. I can't believe how wacky it is. We're going to blow people's minds when Nicolas Cage, you know, rips Willie the Weasel's head off. Mm-hmm. And we'll all be laughing at how hilarious it is. <laughs> and we'll all is. be laughing. It, it is, that, is, that is the worst bravado pride in a one note joke dragged out to 90 minutes yeah and come at me bro as the punchline makes my skin crawl thank god you know i'm going to the source i'm making sure that's what it was i am 99.99 percent sure that's what it was yeah it was come at me bro okay, it, okay. yeah <laughs> confirmed <laughs> it embarrasses me this is in the Entertainment Weekly article that will be linked in the show notes. I think that you'll find other details that you may feel similar about in this interview with the writer and director. It embarrasses If you're me. interested in doing that. I, I, I <laughs> Similar to the come at me bro revelation doing something for you. When I came across this, I was like, ah, I see. I see. I understand entirely <laughs> what this is. This yeah. is. This is somebody who thought it would be so hilarious to just ah. even make this movie. That they didn't even they didn't even care about making it. It's the idea that well, it's so funny for it to exist. Yes, that's what it is. It'll be so funny when this exists. Yes, and it was crazy that Nicolas Cage was super into it, which he apparently was. I don't think he really does many things now. There was that period where he had to. Um, what was that movie that he was? Was it like the Witching Hour or something? Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, was like. It- witchy man or something? I think it's probably witchy man. I remember it was right when everybody was like, okay, this is the period where Nicolas Cage really just Season the to, witch. Season the witch. Where he has to do movies to like pay off his debt. Um, all I remember is him being in kind of like a... What, what is it on the on the um, Animal Crackers box where all the animals are in like a cart? Yeah, it's like a circus. What do you call that? Like a circus... Um, uh, uh, like a wagon. I don't know. Yeah, I feel of. like I can picture Nicolas Cage in like a wagon made of sticks. Oh. Like being pulled on a mountain during Season of the Witch during oh, the commercial. Oh, is that right? I've never, I've never seen this. I haven't either, but I think it was in the commercial. I don't remember They're taking him away. About it. They've taken him. They're taking me. <laughs> they took him. They took me. I got to tell you, I feel like I am. I feel like I'm sitting with my face pressed against the window wishing that we'd watch Season of the Witch. <laughs> I don't even know what it is. <laughs> I don't know what it is either. Keep right? Like I, I'd almost rather... Just take a yeah. take a chance on this. Nicholas Cage. You know what else I thought of? I know. I've been, I've been thinking of all these other. Not that we watch them and, th- and think they're such masterpieces, but I was when I was watching this today. I was like, what could have been? What other movies could we have watched? We and I was like, well, anything. there was there's that movie Numbers. Yeah. Could have watched that. The, I I think I think uh, um, I think this is decidedly on us. I think that oh, yeah. Willy's Wonderland, even the poster screams. This is going to be so awesome. Yeah. The writing was on the wall. We should have You know known. what, Will? I'm going to take this one on the chin. It was you, me. You picked this one? Yes. All right, you're fired. I know. <laughs> we have one. We have another sister. Lynn's joining the show now. <laughs> Chris is out. Honestly, she would be great. You guys are going to be in wonderful hands. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I mean, I was just like, well, I know it's a horror movie that's part of... I, I thought maybe it was part of, like, the Cage Renaissance, and I'm going to say something controversial... That I can't wait. <laughs> well, no, I mean you're not going to really know anything about it. Oh. The Cage, because you haven't seen these movies, the Cage Respect Renaissance of the last few years includes a movie called Mandy ah. and a movie called Color Out of Space. I've seen Mandy, and I didn't want to watch it again. Like if if I were going in blind, I probably would have been like, these are movies that people are into. But I'd already seen it, and it's like just not my kind of thing. Yeah. And I started Color Out of Space, and same. They're they're both kind of like um sort of like trippy acid trip movies, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? And I just don't really like that that much. Colorado Space is supposed to be sort of an HP Lovecrafty thing, I yeah. think. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Mandy, the only thing I've seen is that picture of him driving a, ca- a car. Yeah. Always with the cars. This drive guy, angry. Was he in drive this angry? This guy with the cars. 
What's Drive Angry? I don't know. Look it up. With like Pete Postlethwaite. <laughs> Pete Postlethwaite. <laughs> I don't know. Real quick. Season of the Witch is about 14th century knights uh, who transport a suspected witch to a monastery where monks deduce her powers could be the source of the Black Plague. Ah, sounds great. Um, oh, I'd love to watch Season of the Witch. <laughs> Drive Angry. Let's see if I'm right about that. Yeah. Nicolas Cage and Amber Heard are in Drive Angry. Huh. Uh, a vengeful father escapes from hell and Whoa. chases after the men who killed his daughter and kidnapped his granddaughter. Is Amber Heard his daughter or his love interest? Or his grand... Maybe she's his daughter, granddaughter, and love interest. Maybe. Um, <laughs> anyway. Could be. Whatever. Yeah. Whatever. We blew it. Yeah. We've, we've blown October oh, this year, yeah. guys. I'm we, sorry. We screwed. October's, October's ruined. October stinks. Hang on. We'll see if we can salvage at least this week of October I do, for you. I do have more to say about... Oh, yeah. This movie, of course. We're coming back. But first, we need to take a, a break. We need to take a dip we cool into, the, heads. into the cool waters of Tracy Michelle Bullock. Yes, please. <laughs> From, Restore me. Yes, please, Tracy. <laughs> yeah, you know what? We should have been working more closely with Tracy, even it's though true. we did talk to her. Tracy could have helped us. Tracy could have had us avoid this whole Michigas. <laughs> um so yeah, Tracy Michelle Bullock of Simplicity Do Your Dream dot com, who is an awesome career and creativity coach, could have had us avoid all this. Yes. Uh let's let uh one of our t- clients tell you about her. Musician, producer, and educator Evan McCullough says Tracy has been the rock that I needed to organize and attain the dreams of my life. The Rock, another Nicolas Cage movie we could have watched. <laughs> oh my God, you're right. <laughs> she has a straightforward, effective, and lighthearted attitude that has helped me navigate all the challenges of being a musician and entrepreneur. I'm finally getting all those things uh, done that I didn't think I could do. So seriously, that's an awesome resource. Sometimes you just need like a little gentle kick in the caboose, a little bit of accountability, knowing that there's somebody who is invested in what you're doing and has advice to help you along. It's a huge deal. And so if you're curious about it, Tracy offers free 30-minute coaching calls, which is insanely generous and you can book them through her instagram or her website simplicitydoyourdream.com so getting started couldn't be easier or lower stakes that's right so to check out simplicity do your dream and make your appointment for career coaching from someone who really gets it go to at tracy michelle bullock or www.simplicitydoyourdream.com. And just for you, Guide to the Unknown listeners, Tracy is offering 20% off your first month of coaching if you name drop GTTU pod when you get in touch with her. That's right. So definitely talk to her. You won't regret it. That's at Tracy Michelle Bullock. Michelle has one L in it on Instagram. Simplicitydoyourdream.com. And let Tracy know that Guide to the Unknown sent you for 20% off. Ask her what we should have done differently. Yeah, I know. I mean, hindsight is twenty twenty. Please. I'd um, love to watch an episode of 2020. <laughs> right about now. All right, well, <laughs> 2020 Tober. Next yeah. Month. Oh, God. Actually, yeah. people probably like that because... It's 2020. <laughs> well, so it's, you know, like true What did you think stuff. of Barbara Walters reporting <laughs> this time? <laughs> Did you feel her lens was fuzzier than usual? I feel like it was fuzzier. It was so soft. Yeah. It was like cotton candy. <laughs> um, so let's let's talk about the lore reveal. Okay. What's going on with the animatronics? We know that there There's are... There's some stuff I like here. Yes. Yeah. This is where it starts to get kind of yeah. fun. Briefly. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So there are two different ways that the lore is revealed. One is that Liv, who is part of this team of kids that want to burn down Willy's Wonderland... Yeah. I don't know I, why now. I don't either. Versus I don't any know. other time. I don't know. But they know they need to and get they Nicolas feel they Cage have out of there. A lot of urgency. Yeah. I wish that something had happened I know. recently to make them go like, it's now. Right now. Now's the time to burn it down. But okay. Yeah. So uh Liv starts to explain that this place, Willie's Wonderland, the pizza establishment, mm-hmm. was built in nineteen ninety six. Don't forget that. It okay. Was built in nineteen ninety six. Yes. Oh. And it was run, it was the brainchild of Jerry Robert Lewis, mm-hmm. who was a serial killer. Jerry Lewis. Wait a minute. <laughs> Is this even right? <laughs> no, I mean, I guess so. I don't know. Is it Jerry Robert Lewis? Maybe. 
But uh, yeah, I mean, if you're not using his middle name, then this is just Jerry Lewis. So that it's extra important to put that Robert in there. Oh, I'm, I must have misheard it. You're right. I didn't think about the Jerry Lewis thing. It's Jerry Robert Willis, and I okay. probably heard it as Lewis. Okay, so that's what Willie's like. Willis Willie's Wonderland. Is that oh, the deal? that makes sense. Willis Willie's Wonderland. I guess kind of. His first name should be Will. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Yes. All right. So his real name should who be. Who calls people who last name for Willis Willie? So his... nobody's called Bruce Willis Willie. <laughs> so we've discovered another issue, <laughs> right? <laughs> Glaring. So his real name should be. William Robert Jerry. <laughs> yes, I prefer Will Jerry. Will <laughs> Jerry. Hell of a guy. Sounds really funny. Yeah, to Mr. Me. Jerry. That's true. <laughs> Principal Jerry. Princi- Mr. Jerry is being such a herb today. <laughs> um, anyway, so uh, Jerry Robert Willis was a serial killer, and to staff his establishment, he only hired other serial killers i know that worked out they were cannibals too Uh uh-huh i guess so oh i forgot that yeah so they would take families select families into the super happy fun room Mm -hmm. where they would uh bring out a birthday cake light candles and uh do a little show with willie weasel which would always end in murder right um over time enough of the bodies started to build up inside willie's wonderland that people like you could smell uh, the the decomposing bodies in there. Mm-hmm. And so eventually the police had to investigate and they found in the super happy fun room that before they could bust them, uh, Jerry Robert Willis, William Robert Jerry. Yes. Uh, and his cronies had drawn a big pentagram on the floor and it looks like they drank mm-hmm. poison mm-hmm. to kill themselves as part of a satanic ritual which also was designed to transfer souls into the animatronics. Right. Which is the plot of Child's Play. I about to Play, say, like Chucky. Which is exactly the plot of Child's Play. What the hell's the thing? I mean, you know it. I, I can't remember it right now. Um, what's the what's the prayer thing that he mm. says in Child's Play? <laughs> Not to worry. Ah, they do a dembala. Give me the power I beg of you. And switch right. and switch. That's what uh, Jennifer Tilly adds in Bride of Chucky. <laughs> that's she right. just starts going and switch and switch. And so I don't know why that's there. Ade do we dumbbell? That's right. Ade do we dumbbell? Give me the power. I beg of you. Yes. Chucky, as of our recording right now, a new Chucky show just premiered. Yes, that's right. That's right. Um, so anyway, this is the plot of Child's Play, but yes. with more guys. Yeah, more guys, bigger guys, bigger guys. They're they're full sized animatronics. Yeah, this is a budgetary thing. I get it. The animatronics felt like mascots to me. They felt like, you know, football mascots or something. Well, yeah. I mean, also because there were clearly people in them. Right. Like, there was there was one thing that was a puppet animatronic. That was the ostrich. But all the rest of them were people inside costumes. So, mascots. So, they would sometimes try to walk a little stiffly or whatever. But it completely felt like it was like, what's that guy's name? Like, Griffey or whatever for Philadelphia? <laughs> Griffey. Gritty. Gritty. Oh, yeah. gritty. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, you're right. And even there's a moment where the knight, his name is Nighty Knight, mm-hmm. which I actually, yeah, I think that's a great name Yeah. for a knight that's going to kill you, but as a cute kid's thing. Yeah, Nighty Knight. Anyway, he, at one point, he's swinging a sword around and he re-grips it. Mm-hmm. So you can see his fingers <laughs> like flex. Yeah. And I was thinking, they're not really committing to the robot thing anymore. Uh-huh. Because I don't think that you know, I guess it depends. Are these things supposed to be robots? Or are we saying, no, 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 they're people. Because even the I don't ostrich think so. is I think pecking. They're... You know what I mean? Like, yeah. So Chucky, Chucky the killer doll can do things that the doll body wouldn't be able to do. Right. But also the idea there is that the longer he's in the doll body, the more it becomes his permanent body. Yes. So, so he's like melding he's with melding. it. melding. These, the implication is that they're still robots that are bound to the physicality of of the designed robot, yes. but a human soul is driving it. Yes, I think that's what it's supposed to be. So it's a little weird to see them do things that are gestures and movements that are, to me, human. human. Yeah, for sure. And sized as humans. You know what I mean? <laughs> like Right. The ostrich was the best looking one. Total, and that's because it was not a human in a thing. It was, it was not a human shape. No. Yeah. Um, these are the names of the animatronics. We had Willy Weasel, Artie Alligator, 
Kami Chameleon, Ozzy Ostrich, Nighty Night, Tito Turtle, Gus Gorilla, and Siren Sarah. Let's talk about Siren Sarah. Wait. Before we talk about Siren Sarah, no. I need to let you know something <laughs> okay. that was also from that Entertainment Weekly article. Okay. Um, I don't remember which of them, the writer or director, said this, but they said, Nick is into reptiles. He's into amphibians and he's into dinosaurs. He was the one who was like, hey, make this thing an alligator. Make this thing a chameleon. Let's get a turtle instead of a regular mammal. <laughs> so um. he, he made sure there were amphibians in the house. That, so weird. Why, why is that Im- important? I think it's strange. I think that, that like they could have had mock-ups for, you know, a bear or whatever. And he was like, uh-huh, uh-huh. I hear what you're saying. But let's get a turtle. Let's have a lizard. Let's get some reptiles. I feel it's, like no <laughs> one's listening to me. Yeah, it's go- I said an iguana. It's goofy. Why that- do I see a weasel? Yeah. I'm pissed. This was like part of his input. I think it's funny. Yeah, I, I, uh, 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 okay. I'm fine. With, I, I'm like fine with, so make it all a theme then or something. Why is it a weasel and an ostrich and whatever? Eh, I don't know. I don't Chuck know. E. Cheese has random sh- stuff, I think. So, it's, like, who cares? You're, you're 100% right. I just thought it was funny that he had, a, had an opinion about this. Right. And that's my thing. If you have an opinion, follow the opinion all the way or something. I, I don't know. I guess he had to compromise. I guess. Maybe they wanted a weasel. He wanted an iguana. Yeah. And, you know, never the twain shall meet. <laughs> of course. So they just had to have some of each. Never the twain shall meet. <laughs> so let's talk about Sarah the Siren. Yeah, uh, Siren Sarah. Siren yes. Sarah. So she looks like Tinkerbell. Yeah. Right? But her that animatronic is clearly a human woman. Yeah. Not even wearing a... A, a big animatronic suit. Right. She's her own body mm-hmm. with human skin. Yeah. Or is it a bodysuit? I think it was a bodysuit. I don't think you're just seeing like a person's who who's painted. Like there was something on her, but it wasn't like a big thing that conceals your shape. It looked like uh, just a, a lady mm-hmm. wearing like a pixie shirt. Right. And a big animatronic head, full head mask thing. Yeah. Uh-huh. I I almost I'm like why why did they why did they let even if it's a bodysuit why did they give it any kind of flesh tone make it purple yeah so that it just feels like it's not obviously uh, just a what person. it is an actress that's they only have a head for her to wear I know I don't know that was puzzling yes I found it puzzling as well I don't know maybe they wanted like a hot robot <laughs> I don't I, right. I, I guess. I don't I mean, see I, why else they wouldn't do that. Again, it could be budgetary or something, I guess. Yeah. But Two of our young folk cast go away to the Super Happy Fun Room to, to do the do and have some celebrations. They sure do. So I wouldn't put it past them to be like, we got to have something. That's... Gotta, I, if I'm not looking at one of these animatronics thinking, howdy do, <laughs> what is this for? That's what I'm thinking because there was also... Fellas, I'm looking at this weasel. I don't feel anything. <laughs> There's nothing happening below the belt here. <laughs> A chameleon is closer. I'll give you that. She's got beautiful hair. But Those could big we, eyes. Could we do one that's not even a robot? It's just a sexy lady? That's what I want. I think that had... I'm not kidding. I think that was what was going on. Why do they all have to be robots? <laughs> yeah. robots. What if there's one who's only kind of a robot? I see you got all the robots. <laughs> what if one of them's not even robots? <laughs> This nice lady. <laughs> His nice lady. I think that partially because they also had like an upskirt shot. Oh, of, did they? Yeah, you don't remember that? No. Uh, not of the robot, but uh, of, uh, um, uh. no, of the girl who celebrates yeah. in the room or whatever. She's going up a ladder and she's wearing like a little short skirt. Right. And it was like a straight up like upskirt shot. Yeah. This and is... then they had her boyfriend to like save it or make it not as gross be like hey eyes off and like kind of like cover her butt yeah this, this is this is one of those movies that like revels in in being like it's got everything yes i was about to say that sorry you go ahead then. it's got everything an idiot wants <laughs> <laughs> ass kicking tatas ass looking and ass <laughs> it's, got... <laughs> it's got everything an idiot needs Ass kicking, tatas, and ass. <laughs> That's the pitch. <laughs> oh. 
<laughs> oh, Cage Tober. And they're signing on the dotted oh, line. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. <laughs> oh, boy, oh, boy. <laughs> Oh boy, oh boy. So anyway, so to get more of the lore, the cop later. <laughs> sorry, it's not out of my system yet. <laughs> I know. Ass kicking. Oh. Tatas and ass. That's right. It's horrible. The, th- the three things. Horrible. That every dude, bro. Uh, before you say wants. it, Chucky, they're not all robots. Yeah. <laughs> you haven't seen the best one. <laughs> Ugh. And then this thing walks. I mean, it's not even hot or anything. You know what I mean? It's like this. I don't no, know. It's, it's, it's a woman's form. It's bizarre. Sure. Yeah. The implication is almost that she'd be attractive no matter what freakish head. <laughs> I know. Look, some people, I'm sure, are like, whatever. Ugh. I know. Yeah. That's why I'm like, it's got everything that some idiot wants. I know. It wants. Yes. Again, if you like this movie, I'm very happy for you. Totally. That's that. That's like becoming, it up. That's becoming thinner and thinner. I genuinely do. I can understand the reasons why people would like this. Yeah. There, so there was a review from Rotten Tomatoes <laughs> that kind of like sums it up. Um, they said so. It has a sixty-two percent, <laughs> which is you know decent for Rotten Tomatoes. It's not good, yeah, it's, yeah. but it's not the worst. Is it rated It's fresh. fresh. It's I mean, fresh? 60 and up is fresh, right? Oh, I don't know. I, I think. Um, so the site's critical consensus reads, Willy's Wonderland isn't quite as much fun as, his, as its premise would suggest, but still got Nicolas Cage beating the hell out of bloodthirsty animatronics, which is nice. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that, like, that's you the know, best. Right. That, if that's what you there, want. Yeah, there are things about that that are... It's you know you don't see it every day. I'll, I'll tell it's you. It's a what. novelty. It's not. It's not an everyday action sure. sort of movie. There's something there. I'll get in there and mix it up. I'll say that. Uh, the, so the format. It's one joke that just repeats. Nicolas Cage cleans the place because that's what he signed up to do. He cleans the place. An animatronic pops out. He fights it. He mm-hmm. kills it. It's it's quote unquote bloody, but it's really like black. It's like oil or, or something. Oil yeah, spurting out all over the place. But a ton of it mm-hmm. to like Evil Dead esque degrees where it, you know. Nicolas Cage is covered in oil blood by right. the end of every fight. And then he moves on. And changes his shirt. Changes his shirt. I'll do some cleaning. Animatronic pops out. I'll fight it. I'll get covered in blood oil. Mm-hmm. Repeat. Repeat, 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 repeat. It's one joke yes. repeated throughout the entire movie. However, I I could get into some of the fun of Nicolas Cage fighting a giant gorilla. Yeah. Whatever. It's it's base, but it's it he's fun to watch. He's fun to watch. He's a compelling person. Even if he's being silent. Yeah. And he's got a weird, you know, dyed beard. Yes. He's very kempt in yeah. this movie. Honestly, he looked very healthy in this movie. No, he movie. looked good. He looked good. Yeah. He's he's 57 right now. Mm-hmm. So he's probably 55, 56 making this movie. He's he kicking great. some major ass. He looks he yeah, I I I still like him. Yeah. He's, he's undeniably the best part of this movie. Oh, yeah. Um without him, I oh. <laughs> the word I was going to it's not nice. <laughs> Worthless. Worth yeah. Without Nicolas Cage, I would never watch the, yeah or i turn it off right away you know i can there's a big he brings something yes his charisma is it, it really takes up whatever space it's in there's a big chunk of me that um i i completely relate to and understand somebody who's like five nights at freddy's is cool i want to write my version mm-hmm. like hey i'm talking about that scream script i wrote years ago and i put it back out today yeah um so i i believe <clears throat> in that kind of stuff but also the way that i like to believe that I apply myself to thinking about how everything's supposed to function in something that I'm writing. Mm-hmm. I just don't see yeah. here. And what I do see here is the opposite where it's like, no, 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 it doesn't matter if it makes sense. It has to be awesome. Yeah. And I don't, I don't like that impulse. Yeah. I don't like it. I don't like that. This movie is just, just existing on that. Ex- ex- yeah. 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 Um, we didn't talk a ton about it because there's not a ton to say about it, but the idea, like the, the lore sort of of it all, like of it being like killers who went into these bodies and the town having to continually make sacrifices then to this. So what they did with Nicolas Cage by putting down that spiky thing, they've done over and over every year. I like that montage. Yeah, I do too. I like that. I, I like a satanic sacrifice. So do I. Um, I like seemingly normal townspeople I've who go about been their pro business. Satanic sacrifice. Oh, absolutely! I'll take that stance all day. 
Um, but no, I like people who are just kind of going about their business, but there's this one weird thing they have to do once yeah. a year or whatever yeah, right, it is, right. whatever time increment. But they're just normal besides that. I always kind of enjoy that. They just resign themselves and to it. And they're protecting themselves by doing it. Like at yeah. one point they're like, think about your family, think about your kids, mm-hmm. and then tell me you won't do this. Yeah. Because the idea is, and this is the sheriff that tells us this, um, with, again, this montage of the guy who owns the place selling the same story to all these rooms. Tex McAdoo. Going, Tex McAdoo keeps going like, all you got to do is go in there. You're going to do some cleaning up. Hey, when you wake up in the morning, your car is going to be right here. And as they they montage through, he's giving this one speech, but mm-hmm. they're doing cuts to every time he's given the speech. So he's wearing different clothes. He's talking to different people. Right. And it's edited together so well. It's mm-hmm. almost exciting. It's like a, a real life urban legend. Yeah, you get life. it. You get it. And, it. and it sells it. And I really liked that as I liked the following. The idea here is that they... After the the people who ran the place committed suicide and transferred their souls into the animatronics, they tried to keep business as usual for a while, but the animatronics were acting weird. Yeah. And so they'd bite kids. Yeah, I do like that. Yeah. So eventually they shuttered the place and realized, oh my God, these animatronics are alive. Yeah, something bigger is at play. So they tried to just leave it abandoned and walk away, but the animatronics get hungry. Mm -hmm. So they would leave... They would travel away from Willy's Wonderland and go into people's homes yeah. and go into schools and go into businesses and they would find bodies all around town. Right. So eventually the sheriff stood before Willie the Weasel and said, we will we will keep you fed. Yeah, we'll strike a deal with you. We'll strike a deal as long as you don't leave this building. Mm-hmm. And so that's why it's so important that Nicolas Cage be sacrificed. Right. Because if he's not, then they're coming the out. town folk, kids could be killed. Right. And I, I think those that, that, you know, obviously heightened ridiculous horror, supernatural stakes are super fun. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. um, that's why I'm also puzzled when Nicholas Cage is killing animatronics left, right and center with the greatest of ease. Oh, absolutely. He gets a cut on his cheek and that's it. What kind of janitor is this? The kids in town who wanted to burn the place down, fall into the building, the roof caves in mm-hmm. and they, they get, they almost all get killed except live. Oh, right. They do all get killed except for live. Um, and then still the sheriff is like, he can't leave. He's got to be sacrificed. Mm-hmm. I'm like, well, they ate, aren't they full? Shouldn't they? They ate everything. They're good. Yeah. It's not like they wanted him. Or is it like, you know, you took some of us, so we've got, it's not even, so you've got to still sacrifice on top of the kids we killed because we lost some of our side too. Oh, but uh, I don't know. That, I mean, it's, yeah, know? it's not made clear. So I'm so not anyway, sure. That, that, that all feels messy and, and yeah. like it needed to be de- Developed. Why, why do the animals at Five Nights at Freddy's come alive? I don't remember. So if I remember correctly, and I'm going by very, very early in the franchise lore, granted, yeah, just like I know beginning. that there are a lot of additions that I think did change some of this. The original idea was there. There was a guy who, in the video games, is known as the Purple Man because mm-hmm. that's the way he's portrayed in cutscenes. Um, uh, the Purple Man was a killer who would find children at uh, Freddy's Pizzeria, Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria, mm-hmm. and he would kill them. He yeah. would take them, he would he would drive away with them and, and kill them. And then eventually uh, he kept going back to find more kids. But there's this whole thing of like a puppet, a security puppet or something like that. Okay. Um, was like, I will save you. I will put you all back together. And so he took the the spirits, the dead ghostly spirits of those murdered children and put them in the animatronics. Oh, so yeah, yeah, could, yeah. So that they could rise up against the purple man and get their revenge. Yes, that's right. But now right. they're still just in there. They're right. They're still just walking around every night. Mm-hmm. So, and and part of the, the real fun stuff of that first game, especially, there's this whole wonderful, wonderful mechanism. And it's an indie game, right? So uh, it looked it looked really good. Yeah. Um, but the thing that really pushed over the top was the audio design. So yes, when you first, you're, scary. you're the new night security guard and the phone rings and it's a guy who's your trainer. Mm-hmm. He's known only as phone guy. And he goes, ah, hello, hello. Uh, welcome to your new job as the new night security guard. And over the course of the five nights that you're doing your job, he starts to, there are some cracks in the veneer of his personality where he's like, uh, congratulations. And then later on starts going, so there's something I didn't tell you. Yeah. They um they found one of the suits. Somebody used it. 
Uh, there was blood everywhere. Like, and it gets like really warped and bizarre. Uh-huh. And he tells you that, you know, you'll be fine if you're in the security room, but be careful because if any of the animatronics see you, they, they're going to think that you, they're designed, <laughs> I guess I don't know why they were designed this way. <laughs> they think that you're supposed to be in a suit. Uh-huh. So they'll oh, shove yeah, you right. into one and you'll be ripped apart by the mechanics within the suits. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, it's funny. It's comedic. Just yeah. like this is supposed to be comedic. Yeah. But like in a, in the, the tone is so different. Yeah. It's not supposed to be like Well, also, it's not like a Yeah, it's not badass and it's not like a big action fest. Right. It's actually the game. I mean, I've only played it I think once or twice or if I remember. It's just kind of tense and you making like micro movements, sort of, because you're trying to like sneak by the um what's it called? The animatronics. It's all about like uh uh it's all about just surviving the night. Yeah. So you have to like close the doors to the security area, but you only have so much energy in the generator that will let the doors stay closed. Uh huh. So you're always vulnerable in some way, but you got to spin all these plates. You got to make sure the lights are on. You got to make sure the doors are closed. You got to make sure you don't run out of battery. And you got to keep your eye on them because yeah. if one of them is missing, that means they're coming for you. Right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So it's it's tension where this goes for Wally's Wonderland. Yeah. Goes for like action, right? Hilarity and big spectacle fights. Yeah. I almost wish, and maybe they just maybe this is another one of those things where it's like, well, we're doing basically Five Nights at Freddy's. We can't be that close. Child's Play had Charles Lee Ray go into the body of a doll and mm-hmm. act like Charles Lee Ray. Yeah. Give all of these seven serial killers personalities. Like personalities. They in their each suit. have a job. They each have an M.O. They each have a thing they do and say. Yeah. Maybe even like Nightmare on Elm Street type rules. The the animals they embody have some parallel to the way they live their lives. Uh-huh. You know, like. Yeah. So this guy was a weasel. Right. right. He was always sneaking around. He was always backstabbing his partners. Like Wally Weasel could have turned on one of the other animatronics to get something he wanted. Yeah. So like, mm-hmm. you know, take animal traits and make them be part of the serial killer. Let's let's let that character shine. Yeah. Uh, and let's have them. There's a, a moment that I really like where the chameleon uh, thing uh-huh. is, walks into a room and is like, yeah, that was... I know you're in here. You don't have to be afraid. I'm not like the other ones. Yeah. I wouldn't hurt you. I know what it feels like to be different. P.S. She should have been talking to a kid uh-huh. whose character trait is that he feels outsidered, outsider indifferent. I right. thought the same thing. This guy was just like one of their friend group. It's not like they were ever like, can it Peter? And yeah. like leaving him out or something. Yeah. Eat fudge, PJ. Yeah. And like kicking him in the dirt. Right. Like th- there's nothing like that that makes him feel othered. Yeah. And so when the chameleon tries to appeal to him by being like, I know what it feels like to be othered. Mm-hmm. You just feel missed opportunity. Okay. Yeah. Which is another thing where it's just like the things I'm proposing for this are not, they're not brilliant suggestions. They're basic. Yeah tenants of of structure and like arcs and setup and payoff and Mm -hmm. how things could work yeah they're not revolutionary in a perfect world i don't know why these things don't have personalities i know it's very weird and yet one of them did have a personality it's puzzling yeah similarly and uh you you said that they had a plan at one point for uh nicholas cage to say one line right i could feel that throughout this whole movie this is what he's doing and I get that he was drawn to it. It's Kevin Smith. It's Silent Bob. Mm-hmm. You have him be silent all the time. He can mug. He can gesture. For whatever reason, this guy is silent. Right. But he doesn't really give us much of anything in here. Kevin Smith is Silent Bob. Mm-hmm. Will gesture and like sort of like frown and like hand wave people away. Yeah. Where you know what he's saying, even though he's not saying anything. Nicolas Cage just flat um, turns fights. and walks away and you don't know. You have no idea. Give him one Except thing to say. Except for the joy conveyed in the dance. Okay, go ahead. You're, you're well. You're right. Give him one thing to say, and it's incredibly important. Yeah. Or fine, do the joke of, of you know, when he's driving away at the end, and he's got Liv in the car. They both survive, and they drive off together. I don't know why. Yeah, I know. I guess they, they don't know each other. Survived something together. Yeah. She's survived an encounter where her entire family is killed, so maybe she has no place to go. He's alone, or she's alone, or so yeah. they team up. Okay. But so as they're driving away, have her, you know, just go like, you know. Uh, so where are we going now? Yeah. And he just goes, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Just even just have it be like a micro yeah. thing. Not not a come at me, bro, joke. I know. Or- but like the one thing he says is. <laughs> Sorry, I had a frog in my throat. 
or 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 have him turn and go. I have so much to tell you. <laughs> Cut yeah. to credits. <laughs> right? I don't know. Yeah, something. But like Kevin Smith always had Silent Bob come out with one really big important thing at the mm-hmm. end, even if it was a joke. Yeah. I was like, I could sense that that like, yeah. probably, probably could have been here. Totally. It it's worked. weird that it wasn't, honestly. It's, it's a, actually, it's very strange. Yeah. So give me a review from yeah. someone before we wrap up. Um, uh, although as I, as I, as I refresh myself on these, do you have anything to say about the pinball dance? No, there's not, there's nothing to say. Got it. Right. Uh, it, it, for everybody who hasn't seen the movie, he plays pinball and then all of a sudden he does like a, a spastic sort of Nicolas Cage being crazy dance. It felt like Napoleon dynamite. <laughs> yeah, it kind of did. I mean, I didn't think of that at the time, but like they definitely share some DNA. Yeah. Those dances. Um, so, um, I think I copied maybe the wrong review. Okay. No, no, maybe this is fine. <laughs> Maybe this is fine. All right. I don't know. No, I figured it out. I figured it out. All right. Bunny on Amazon said, uh, uh, Nicholas, <laughs> the title of this review, Nicholas Cage can step on me. Oh, okay. <laughs> and then the, the body of the review says, very good movie. 10 out of 10. Watch with friends. Oh, okay. Nicholas, watch with friends. Nicholas Cage can step on me. If that's how you feel about Nicholas Cage, I don't know if you should be watching that with friends. And then and then most of the other five out of five star reviews were, you know, like Nicholas Cage is, you know, animatronic daddy. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Okay, whatever. I don't yeah. know. But so I got some bad reviews. Here I've got two bad reviews to share with you, and I really love the second one. Here's okay. the first one from Rachel Peterson titled What the Actual F. Too bad there isn't a negative two stars available. Even then, I would still rate it negative three. <laughs> nice. <laughs> burn. All right, Rachel. <laughs> what the actual F is this? Let's cast Nicolas Cage slaughtering mechanized singing puppets. Said no one ever. It's with those periods. So it's like, said yep. no one ever. Oh, yeah. Nobody does that anymore. No one the really claps. Does that. I know. Yeah. I do it, but I, I know it's too late. <laughs> Um, except for the director of this awful movie, the pandemic was possibly the best thing that happened for this movie. I can't imagine any theaters ever letting it through their doors. Don't waste your money, your brain cells, your time, or electricity. Wow. All right, Rachel. Yikes. Rachel's against it. Yikes. And then I, 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 I loved this. There is a full review, but I think I'll just read uh, this title and leave it at that. Sure. It's from Mama Bear. I didn't pick grandson did oh one out of five stars <laughs> so, awesome i will i'll give you pe- i'll give Wait, you a did piece it say of anything it, it did there's more i'll give you i'll here's here's all i'll read from the rest because she sort of talks more but i did like this opener to it i love all his shows till now oh that's so nice so mama bear wanted to watch a movie with you know, her, her grandson, grandson with baby bear he picked this and it was the the thing that made her not like all of everything Nick Cage has ever done. One of oh, I thought stars. she was saying she liked all of her grandson's shows that he picks. Oh, I bet you're right. I think she's saying His I've liked shows. everything that I've watched with my grandson until now. I got mixed because one is the title and one's in the body of the review. Yeah. So I thought like the... The subject changed, but I think you're right. Mm-hmm. I didn't pick. Grandson did. I love all his shows till now. Yeah. Grandson won't be picking the next one. <laughs> I don't think so. I think, I think it's time for Mama Bear to pick. I think you are 100% right about that, Reed. Yeah, that's <laughs> very cute. One out of five stars. <laughs> so I get, I don't know, it ruined our grandmother's relationship with her grandson. <laughs> that's all you need to know. That's all you need to know about this movie. <laughs> and Cage Tober limps on. <laughs> <laughs> it certainly does. It's wearing a cast. Uh, and uh, uh, and on we go. On we go. We Where have we to. stop? I know. I know. At the I, end of I, October, I, I know exactly when. Yes. But we're not. We're not going to stop. Oh we're, no! We're not just through, yet. Right? Yes. Yeah. I mean, do you want to stop? No. I okay. don't know why I yeah. don't, but I don't. Yeah. I I would stop if you were willing to, but I, I don't know think you would. I'm yeah. sh- I'm shocked that you are not. No, I, I know that you like to like, not that I'm ditching things left and right that are you know important in life. Yeah. But like you 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 wouldn't do that. You don't want to like end body a series. Of work. Yeah. I think the agony of Cage Tober is the kind of thing. It's it's also the ecstasy. Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, I I think that someday we'll look back on Cage Tober. Yes. And laugh. Yeah. I think people enjoy our misery. I hope so. And I think that. Um, 
<laughs> I don't know. I think that Cage Tober will go down in, his, in history as something we'll never do again. Yes, definitely. We've made our bed. Um, and... Maybe I should reveal at this point. There was a period of time where I considered doing a spinoff podcast called Caged In. Oh, that's right. Where I was going to watch right. every Nicolas Cage movie, everything he ever did, ever did, ever did. So, Will, are we going to be seeing Caged In? You know what? There's no need. <laughs> yeah, this is Caged There's In. There's no need. We're already we're already caged in. <laughs> we truly are. Yeah. So thank you for listening and or watching. We'll be back next week. But in the meantime, if you'd like to check out some more Guides to the Unknown, go to patreon.com slash pod. We have bonus shows over there. We have commentaries for all the Scream movies. We have video game playthroughs. And we have a Discord channel channel with a bunch of other people who listen to guides the unknown and talk about cool stuff all the time it's awesome yeah it, it really is it's it's super fun so go check that out mm-hmm. also this week we did drop our uh uh yeah i guess it's a reaction video yeah it's on the podcast feeds to the new scream trailer mm-hmm. which is something that we've never really done before but honestly we we just had some stuff to say totally so you can check that out it's there right now yep. and if you go to gttupod.com it has everything that we've done so there are links to our patreon our merch store our facebook group all our episodes info about advertising with us anything you need is over on gttupod.com that's right everybody so go check that out and make sire you follow us online as well yep I'm at chillin Kristen I am at the myth traveler so we will be back next week for our fourth yep Nick Cage movie yep but until that time comes we must travel back to the netherworld go we it's a dark dark wood. Take any that we are walking through. <laughs> we'll t- I'll take these six days. Ooh, wind blowing through my hair, watching things other than Nicolas Cage movies. And on the seventh day, Willie slept. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. Hello. Uh, 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 boy, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. So KB says, I'm loving these Nick Cage movie episodes, even if the movies are terrible. Good. Good. I'm, I'm very Good. glad. Yes. Uh, Lily asks a question. Sure. Have we watched Antebellum? I have not. No. The name rings a bell. Yes. That came out, um, I think it's with Janelle Monet. Okay. And it came out like either this year or 2020. Oh. It was an Amazon movie, I think. But no, I have not watched it. I think I've heard good things about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Maybe I'll have to add that to a list. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, Dustin says, I can't believe that we didn't watch Drive Angry. Has to be the best weird Nick Cage. Hmm. Maybe let's look at let's look at that. What are you nuts? What do you mean? You don't want you, you don't want to stay there. You don't want to pivot. Wait, what? What? Look at that. Oh, instead of something else? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. A potential swap in. Oh, sure, I'll do a swap. A potential swap in. Well, maybe we'll have to look at that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, uh, <laughs> I thought you meant like, oh, we'll have to also check that out. Yeah, we'll we'll drag Nick uh, Cage Tober into November. <laughs> or like a Patreon something. I don't know. Cage Vember. Cage Vember. Nope. No. Uh, and Andrea says, glad that we are both feeling better and Thank glad that we you. are back. I'm, I'm, Thank hey, you. Hey, listen, we're, we're happy to be back too. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, wow. Wow. All right, everybody. All right. Well, I think that's that's going to do it for us this week. I think that uh-huh. we've got to peel out. But yeah. keep uh, honestly, keep your eyes peeled. Mm-hmm. Um, because uh, uh, you may have sensed that we've been uh, working on something, and we have been. Special announcement will be coming soon. That's right. I, would, I dare say next week. Yes, it will be. Monday. Yeah, Monday. Monday. Yeah. Okay, you understand? Mm-hmm. Look out for something on. There's stuff coming. We've been working on Monday. it. Monday. Yeah, we actually have a lot of stuff to show you. We have such sights to show you. Yeah. (laughs) All right, everybody. Have a great rest of your night. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. We'll see you somewhere else. Bye. Have a good night. Bye-bye.